Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're planting up these two containers right here. I've got a really interesting mix of plants to show you, three of which are brand new for 2022. So they're, I'm just trying them out this year. Uh, and these, I would say, are full sun containers because here we are, it's almost two o'clock and they're still in quite a bit of sun and they've been in this kind of situation all morning. However, they are kind of shaded by the beams. I mean, you can see where the fence is kind of creating a little bit of a shadow. And then this one will become shaded first, probably in the next hour or two. And then eventually this one is protected from the really hot afternoon sun. So I can kind of do like part sun to full sun plants in these containers, um, but I've got a, such a beautiful mix here. I was kind of playing with it last night and I am going to pack this full. This is how I always used to plant containers and every once in a while I just kind of want to like Aaron always errs on <laughs> spreading things out a little bit and I err on like let's look big it look beautiful from day one. Um, so our centerpiece plant here is a fireworks penicetum. So it grows a little bit different for me in my experience than the um, purple fountain grass um, in that it's a little bit smaller. It doesn't bulk up quite as much, which makes it a very uh, easy centerpiece to use because then you can fill in with other things around it. My next layer down, um, I've got actually a few different kinds of plants here. I've got this coleus called El Brido. This is a new one for next year, and I think the coloring is absolutely phenomenal on this plant. I love the ruffly edged leaves here. I like the interior here is kind of a burgundy purple, and it comes out to almost like a salmon color, uh, kind of a corally salmon, and then the bright chartreuse. It's such a striking coleus. Now this is part of the Color Blaze series, so they can uh, handle full on sun, even in our high desert, so long as they get enough moisture. They do grow quite large though, so I'm thinking I might have to keep this one pruned a little bit because I have three of them in this container. Um, next we have, this one's a new one for 2022 as well. This is a calla lily called, I've got the tag here, Be My Main Squeeze. Now I haven't grown a ton of callas in my day and I'm hopeful that it's going to do okay in a mixed container because I do know that they tend to bloom more and longer, not longer, but bloom more if they're kept pot bound. And I'm thinking, well, I mean, I'm putting a lot of stuff in here. So I'm <laughs> hoping that that kind of indicates to the plant that it's a little bit pot bound and we get a lot of blooms. Uh, but the cool thing about these is that these blooms will last uh, like 12 weeks and they just get more and more intense in color as time goes on. But not only that, the leaves are always really pretty. They're bold and they've got little silver like speckles on them. Hey Cheddar, he emerges. He's usually sleeping during the day somewhere. Hey bud. Um, so I'm very excited about this and I feel like the color is absolutely gorgeous with this coleus actually. Look at that. Look at that pairing. It's so pretty. Okay, and so next, we've got a surefire rose begonia, which is not a new plant, but this is on the small side right now. And I'm kind of hoping that the grass is like here and that this and the surefire rose can kind of be the same size. So right now it'll look a little bit off, but as the surefire grows, it'll fill in and kind of be the bulk and weight on, and color on this side. Um, so the surefire begonias can actually handle sun or shade as well, which makes them very versatile. Uh, this is the other new one for 2022. It's called a Safari Dawn James Britannia, which is a South African phlox. I have absolutely zero experience with this plant, so I'm so excited to try it. Um, there's another one called Safari Sky that's more of like a bluish purple with the yellow center, but I thought that this would be really pretty with the coleus. It kind of like draw out that bright center there. Um, and so, these, I was talking uh, to one of the people at Proven Winners, and they said they've been trialing these plants for close to 30 years. And they finally have come up with two varieties that are amazing. And that's the thing, like a lot of their things are just trialed for so many years and, and bred to be these amazing plants that will hold up to so many different conditions. Like these are really heat and drought tolerant. Um, they will bloom from the moment you plant them through frost, supposedly. So we're gonna try it out here. I'm hoping that it's okay and compatible with other plants in this arrangement, but I do have enough to plant a few on their own too, just to try them out. They're kind of like, a, almost like a Bacopa alternative. That's kind of what they remind me of. So anyway, I'm very looking forward to, very much so looking forward to seeing the growth on this one. Then of course, we've got a super tunia honey because that color just goes perfectly with everything here. We've actually been fairly moist with rain here. And so these are looking a little bit like they need to dry out. Um, they got a little bit too much moisture. And then we've got a um, 
Plum Dandy Alternanthera as a nice spiller accent. We've got the nice color here, kind of matching the center of the coleus. And then it seems like super overkill when I'm going through all, all the plants. I'm like, oh my word, I have so many in here. Um, this is a peachy keen superbina. Again, just a nice kind of pinkish color to go with the rest. And then a couple of vinca just to top it all off. It's a variegated vinca. I did trench a line across here yesterday. I dug up this whole area. I have a, a, a half inch black poly tubing right here. And then I tapped into it, brought up drip and um, filled it with potting soil. I have a little extra in case I need to top it up. And I did put some biotone. You can kind of see that grayish stuff on the top there. So I ran out of flower tone, so I tossed some biotone in there. So anyway, I think what I'd like to do is just get these planted and then we'll take a look. And I'm hoping that they are gonna be just like the most amazing containers ever. Guys, I love these. In fact, Erin, if you want to swing around here, you should look at them from this view. Like this is a view I was planting them at. And I think they're so gorgeous. I'm going to love watching these fill in. I think the colors are just beautiful together. And like I said, the Kella at this point does look like it's kind of sticking up. Well, it is. It's sticking up more than the other plants. But we've got to let the grass have a little bit of time and a little bit of heat so that it can be the tallest member of our I don't know what to say, group of plants. And then our surefire rose begonia will fill in this space right here so that we'll kind of have an equal level. And then the uh, coleus, I'm gonna probably have to tame their growth just a little bit um, to where they all kind of cohabitate really happily together. But so far I'm super happy with the way they look. Um, this one, the cal is even a little bit taller and the grass is a little bit shorter than the other one. It's very hard to find things that exactly match, but just give a, them a little time and they'll both kind of catch up with one another. So before we end this video, I just want to give you guys a little update on what's going on with the Hartley uh, because we've had some progress. Actually, Chad was working this morning. He has his excavator here and he's getting it all ready for the concrete stem wall. Look at this. Like this makes it feel like every step that we do, like the gazebo leaving and then the concrete pad going away and then this, it just feels more and more real. I can't even believe it. And then the concrete stem wall is supposed to be poured in the next couple of weeks ish two to three weeks yeah. somewhere in that time frame um, and then we'll be able to see like the true outline you know with something more solid than paint on the ground so anyway I just wanted to give you guys an update of what was going on in this area they are so good I mean they've been coming in with their equipment right here they're so respectful of everything around them and they're just they do everything so clean and tidy it's just really really nice they did run into a water line it was shooting up uh, really far earlier today so we're gonna have to take care of that at some point, but it, that's just kind of inevitable. We don't know where everything is here, and that's what happens when you come in on a place that has multiple systems. How many water systems were here, like three? Yeah. Two of them were abandoned, and so every once in a while we find a pipe and we don't know for sure if it's like an active pipe or not. Who knows, but anyway, every time we dig a hole, we learn more and more about this property though. So yeah, anyway, just wanted to give you an update on what was going on here. Super excited about those containers, just that's two more done. We've got a few more to show you guys before we're done with container planting for the season. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye.